So what is what, what is happening inside American politics when someone refrains? Well, we have, in some ways, it, it's, it's a complicated situation. We have to look at it very carefully and strategically. In uh, Washington, uh, most Democrats support Ukraine at a, at a pretty, you know, keep funding Ukraine. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, Secretary Blinken uh, from the Biden administration was just in Kiev uh, and promised another billion dollars in aid. But we got to, so the Democrats are willing to throw money at Ukraine, uh, but, the, and the opposition to Ukraine comes from many Republicans. I think it's a growing number. But notably, the only people in Washington who support swift and full victory for Ukraine, mm -hmm. including long range weapons, mm -hmm. including taking back Crimea, mm -hmm. the only strong voices for that are a minority of Republicans. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of a tricky, complicated thing, which Russian propaganda uses very well. Anytime there's a little bit of confusion, exactly. the Russian propaganda can sweep in. And so, the, and for example, so when Secretary Blinken was here, $1 billion in aid. But that's not, you know, when, when, the, when the Republican skeptics of Ukraine hear that, they think, oh, why are we spending billions and billions of dollars? They don't see the results. Mm -hmm. uh, and they think it's actually real money. Mm -hmm. It's not. Most of that, like for example, most of the defense money that's so, you know, allegedly spent on Ukraine is uh, a valuation of the old equipment that we purchased in, in the U.S. in the 1980s and 1990s. And it's, it's, it's a valuation, it's, it's an estimate of how much that equipment is worth. Mm -hmm. It's not new money that's being spent. And, and so we have a pro so this is a problem because, you know, the White House, I wish they'd be more careful when they explain these things because they have to know every time they say out, throw out these huge figures, mm -hmm. well, the skeptics only get more skeptical, become more skeptical. Mm -hmm. uh, they already don't trust the government, which I understand after 20 years of war in Afghanistan. Uh, in Iraq, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're skeptical of any government that wants to go into war. Yeah. And so, and, and that's where there's very few voices in Washington that are very precise. Washington's never good at talking about spending. They love, in fact, Ukraine's a, you know, it still is a popular topic. And so they shove their secret projects into the spending bills. That's normal Washington behavior. That's always a problem, but we especially see why it's a problem now because life is on the line. And more than that, you know, I, I went back the other day and I watched the film The Darkest Hour mm -hmm. about uh, from the late 1930s, you know, how Churchill was a voice in the wilderness saying and trying to get the U.S. to pay attention, trying to get Europe and the U.K. Uh, to, to pay attention to the evils of Hitler. And we see how quickly Europe fell uh, in, in, the, in, in 1939, especially. And England was the only, uh, you know, holdout, really. And now, if you look at a map, so I encourage people to watch that film, but if you look at a map of Europe and you see just how big Ukraine is, mm -hmm. it's the largest country totally within Europe. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, just all that is under threat. But because Ukrainians are willing to fight with whatever they're given, uh, or, or, or not giving up, uh, Europe is still free. But just um, you have to look at what happened in the 1930s and just imagine that a country the size of Ukraine had fallen into Russian hands. And then you can just see what would happen next. It's a very, very uh, dark, but unfortunately accurate parallel uh, yeah. comparison, historical comparison. You know that I recently uh, read the uh, book Bloodlands, yeah. uh, Europe between Hitler and Stalin by Timothy Snyder. And uh, he actually called these lands, the Europe, like Bloodlands. You know, because all these different geopolitical powers want to take it, but mostly it's regimes, political regimes, Stalin regime and the Hitler regime. So my last question concerning the, what we have to do, you, the public figure, I am a public figure, to improve the, the pro-Ukrainian tendencies in the American and the West society, because you mentioned very important thing, the common values, freedom, I can add, family, church, so we have a lot of common values with the conservative party. Yeah. Uh, so how to knock on the door? <laughs> well, you know, Ukraine is... Uh, and, and you know, there, there's so many people, and I don't like the terms left and right. That's probably the reason why I yes. got out. I escaped Fox News. I started off there as you know, 23 year old, uh, uh, but I escaped in a car chase because I, I rejected that world. They, 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 there was a fundamental dishonesty there, and I, I don't think we should be put in a box. You know, our ideas and our lives are not left or right. Those are terms from the French Revolution, mm -hmm. uh, and I think a lot of Americans. I know a lot of Americans. Are, are resisting this and, and, and waking up to the fact that we can have, uh, as Ukrainians did in 2014. Yeah, and this is why I think Ukraine can be such a model uh, for America. Uh, the Ukrainians said in 2014, 
we are not going to be governed by corrupt oligarchs from another country or this country. And you took back your government. You, you, you made it of the people uh, once again. That's the only reason why this war is happening. And so everyone in America who thinks that they're fighting like the woke ideology or ty tyranny, um, that's all wars because actually Ukrainians are the ones literally fighting uh, the tyranny. And, you know, Russia is not, I mean, and, and going back to Soviet times mm -hmm. and times of the Tsar, it's, an, it's a sick society. Uh, that's why they have a dictator. Uh, it's an unhealthy society, very vertical. Ukraine is the most horizontal yeah. nation in the world, I think. Very democratic. Self organized nation. Yeah, and uh, uh, and we can. And there's so much more to discuss in that theory. But then, uh, but Russia is is, is extremely uh, vertical, and people so, sort of given up all hope. And actually, when I look at a lot of America and I see that how we're all different camps are so angry at each other, and we our society seems to be collapsing in many ways. People don't even know their neighbors. I'm worried for America that we're turning more into something like Russia, which is uh, sort of ironic because now we have, you know, some American conservatives praising Russia as a healthy society, and it's not. I mean, you know, I've lived I lived in Lviv during the pandemic, mm -hmm. and it's it's not political. So, and this is why I think American conservatives can't understand it. People aren't going around saying, "Oh, you know, this is my religion, this is my political ideas." It, it, they don't do that. It's just natural, you know. And you can have debates with the, the first and foremost thing. Is that there's amazing free speech in Ukraine. Um, you can joke about anything, you can debate with people, and you still will be friends. And uh, and that's something we've lost in America. And you can't have democracy without the ability to to talk. Uh, but Ukraine is this, you know, on, on so many different categories. Ukraine is exactly the society that people in America, on both left and right, really want. Um, for example, uh, the, the, even the food here, it's more natural. It's not everything's not corporate control. Yeah. Uh, we don't eat a bunch of chemicals, and I've actually been healthier than I have. Uh, I had horrible allergies my whole, my whole life. They're gone in Ukraine. Uh, this, these parts of the story get missed. Uh, and, and then I think that the, the, the way families are connected and community, communities are connected, uh, crime is incredibly low. Uh, you know, I, I'm, in, I'm in Kharkiv when there's no lights, walking around the streets. The only threat is Russian missiles from the sky. Shakes and shakes. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, and then the Iran, Iranian uh, suicide drones. Uh, but, but walking on the streets, uh, you, you're safe, and and, and this, this is a cohesive, uh, healthy society. For all of the problems that there are, there's always problems, and with with, with radical freedom like the Ukrainians have, there's problems that come with that type of radical freedom. Uh, but but anyone that's in America who talks about freedom, they they, they need to study Ukraine. And so as a journalist, I realize that they don't have access to that exactly. information. You're right. And every American I bring here is amazed. In fact, usually when people leave Ukraine and go back to the states. They're sad. And this applies both to liberals and conservatives. Uh, there was a Harvard professor, uh, and she, she was so sad leaving Ukraine. She said she's had the best conversations of her life here because it's actual free speech. Uh, conservative Americans, I know, go back and they, they lament how, you know, we have all these culture wars in America, but for what? And, and you know, in America, we we'll just keep arguing and arguing and arguing. Where are we going? Um, and, and there's just so I, the best thing I can do as a journalist is to share the voices of real Ukrainians. Uh, with, with Americans, and that's one of our projects. Uh, we have a new podcast, uh, Land of the Free with Ukrainsk mm -hmm. uh, to, to so Americans can hear both Ukrainians and Americans who come here to say why they're fighting, why they're standing in this fight. I, I, I want to think one more time. I think in the future we'll make one interview, uh, maybe not one interview because you're very accurate, and uh, I, need, I, I think I need five hours. To well, we have so much to talk yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I think in the future we can uh, cooperate maybe in some common project. So, Joseph, thank you for your, for your activity, for your pro-Ukrainian uh, position. Uh, maybe you are now more Ukrainian. <laughs> <laughs> well, as always, malo for malo. Yeah, uh, malo for malo. Uh, and, and as we talk, so I'm going uh, east. Uh, we're delivering a drone that Americans help support. And uh, you're going on this very important conference in Budapest to, yeah. to convince people uh, the neighboring country to wake up. This is the flight. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, supposed to, you, yeah. you know, the last, like, we, we love superhero movies as Americans. And uh, Good vs. Evil, Lord of the Rings, and the Marvel movies. This is the real, this is your chance. If you if you ever wanted to be part of some great thing, you don't just have to watch it on film. You can live it, not even by coming here. You can help Ukraine on um, so many different ways, like never before. People, you know, as I said, in Chicago, raise money for a drone. Um, so if you watch a superhero movie and you feel good emotions about it, and you want to join the fight for Good vs. Evil, mm -hmm. Help you cry. Thank you. Thank you, Ben.